Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church in Fall River. So good we could gather today here in person and online. Welcome. My name is the Reverend David Horst. I uh, am joining you today from uh, Norwich, Connecticut, and I am very happy to be here uh, with you this morning to do some singing and some, some praying and some sharing and uh, reading and share some, uh, share some words inspiring, I hope. My presentation today, I explore the inner work of aging um, in my sermon, The Wisdom of Age. As many of us are transitioning from a life of family work and acquisition into our elderhood, uh, we explore how our roles have changed and how we move from role to soul. And I'll conclude this morning by offering some spiritual practices. So let's begin our time of uh, worship by lighting our chalice. Chalice is the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist living tradition of faith. And each time we invite the chalice, it gathers us once more into community, friendship, and into hope. Let us rise and sing together our opening hymn, number 191. Now I recall my childhood. <laughs> Let's read together our affirmation. It's number 471 in our hymnal. Love is the doctrine of this church, the quest of truth, its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve human need, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. Amen. Amen. 
Are there any announcements this morning? Members, friends here wish to share. I have an announcement. Um, I'd like to say we are continuing our course in miracles each Friday at 11 a.m. with the Reverend Dr. David Trinity on Zoom. And we are going to start a new program, which is going to call Inner Christianity with David. And uh, during therapy classes that will go through David on our Zoom and hopefully our live uh, YouTube and Facebook. If you're interested, you can go to Dr. Ranking Miracles at gmail.com. We'll be glad to just if you send an email to us with information and you want to find out more about it, you can get through with David and he will be glad to answer those questions. But those other two programs, uh, Inner Christianity is with Richard Smalley, and it's a friend of David's, and um, he would like to have us all join in with that. It's a, a beautiful book that I've learned a lot from him, and Inner Christianity, I think everyone has a little piece in it. <laughs> Um, yes, please. Kit. Yeah, I want to say thank you so much for traveling all the way from Connecticut to be with us this morning. We really appreciate getting to meet you in person this year. And we'll be in touch with us. All right. Thank you. And I want to let you know that Daniel Devon will be our service next time. So we'll be here as well. Thank you. Any, any final announcements? All right, then. For our invocation this morning, let us read antiphonally. You'll find the words in your order of worship this morning. Hearts open. Based on Psalm 1. Blessed are the human ones who have grown beyond their needs. Amen. But they delight in the way things are and keep their hearts open day and night. Their leaves will not fall or wither. Everything they do will succeed. Let us pray. God of our unfolding lives, we are thankful to gather today in community companions on the journey of the spirit, seeking comfort and courage in a world of division, disease, and war. Let us reimagine our lives as we continue to be formed and reformed so that we might grow deep in our wisdom, expansive in our compassion and patient in our love. Then may we each in our own way each in our own place, reimagine a different world, a world where conflicts are resolved through dialogue, where misunderstandings are settled by forgiveness, where poverty and want are met with generosity and love. With compassion and strength, let us act. Let us lead dialogue. Let us offer forgiveness and let us give generous generosity and love to others, especially those with whom we disagree, neighbors near and far. We are but one planet, one creation, one people in an infinite unfolding universe. And this, this is our home, our only home, our fragile home. Now let us have faith in each other, faith in human potential, faith in the creator and creative God, faith in the eternal unfolding of all life. Blessed are we, the human ones. Amen. Continuing in the spirit of prayer and reverence, I invite you to join me song comfort me if this song and this tune are new to you uh, i assure you you will pick it up quickly follow me through the first verse we'll sing it through four times <laughs> mm -hmm. 
comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Sing for me. Sing for me, sing for me, sing for me, oh my soul. Sing for me, sing for me, sing for me, oh my soul. Dance with me. poem by Wendell Barry, No Going Back. No, no, there is no going back. Less and less you are the possibility you were. More and more you have become those lives and deaths that have belonged to you. You have become a sort of grave containing much that was and is no more in time. Beloved then, now and always. And so you have become a sort of tree standing over a grave. Now, more than ever, you can be generous toward each day that comes, young to disappear forever and yet remain unaging in the mind. Every day, you have less reason not to give yourself away. I turn 67 next week. And I'm not shy about telling people it's my birthday, whether they are friends or strangers alike. And why not? How else am I sure to receive birthday wishes or a nice dinner and cake and best of all, some gifts? Now, among folks in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, age, uh, age 67 is nothing to brag about. Now, among the under 40 crowd, however, grave questions may arise. When are you going to retire? Are you still walking unassisted? <laughs> Can you still eat solid foods? I am blessed with good mental and physical health and a loving spouse and children, a nice home, financial security, a rewarding ministry in the community where I live and in the religious tradition that I love so much, I am blessed with an ever deepening faith. So I'm not sure, is age, age 67 kind of a big deal or not a big deal at all? The more important questions are these, what have I learned and how have I grown up and how have I deepened and 
Am I older and wiser? I am, and perhaps some of you here as well, are in the third and final act of life. Childhood and youth are but a distant memory. The lights on the middle years of family, career, and the fervid acquisition of homes and material things, those are now dimming. Now, raising the curtain on later years, we seek to enter the stage of wisdom and self-actualization, perhaps with the hope of leaving a legacy in the family and community where we once lived and with whom we served. The odds of a long third act, thankfully, are in my favor. I'm white, I'm educated, I'm married, financially secure, a non-smoker, a moderate alcohol user, a committed walker. I suffer from no chronic diseases. So that gives me a 75% chance to live until age 84. I looked it up. <laughs> and a 50-50 chance to make it until age 92. I will take those odds. I'd rather count up my years than count down my days. What I'm trying to do here is talk about mortality without being morbid, to look back without syrupy nostalgia or sorrowful regret, to look back and then to look forward without fear or dread, but rather to accept and honor the time I am given to be thankful each and every day to keep living a life of meaning and purpose, to savor the present moment. I find, in fact, that this open-eyed awareness of my mortality brings comfort and hope and new possibilities and the affirmation of life. For some, this mortality awareness may come as a shock. Perhaps this awareness came after the first grandchild was born or at the culmination of a successful career or, or an illness related to aging or serious injury or the death of someone close. For me, as mundane as it sounds, it was receiving my first social security retirement payment last year, which affirmed my life of work beginning in high school continuing through college and my career without any significant breaks. Social security was my mortality awareness and my affirmation. One response when the realization of our finite earthly life drifts us might be to look back, to do a life review, to try to name the key moments and passages in our lives from a higher and broader vantage point. A life review is very much like the spiritual odyssey process many Unitarian Universalists do when they first join a congregation. When a new or newer member prepares and puts on paper the biography of their lives from a religious or spiritual perspective, perhaps some of you here have done such a process. It begins with family history. And at the center of one's odyssey may be participation in religious communities. For as we know, the majority of Unitarian Universalists arrive here from different faith traditions or no faith tradition at all. More than this, one's religious odyssey would certainly include major life events of marriage, career, divorce, education, career, homes and communities, great books and travels, significant bouts of illness perhaps, for some addiction, recovery, career ups and downs, successes and failures, all a part of this life. Some in this time of Odyssey share their experience of personal tragedy and the deaths of loved ones. In this process, we seek to step back, to soften our gaze 
reserve our judgment and see the shape of our life. Every time I do my spiritual odyssey, more is revealed. What I remembered of my life 20 years ago is very different than what I remember now. What was once significant has become less so. What was once seemed trivial and fleeting takes on new meaning today. If you do the process, the process again, you may find the same thing. And if you do, you may see your life with, with new eyes, older eyes, the eyes of wisdom. Looking back is not the same as going back, as the poet tells us, no, no, there is no going back. Less and less you are the possibility you were. On the other side of these kind of hard but truthful words, I hear a positive message for those entering their elderhood. Yes, yes, there is only going forward. More and more, you are the possibility that has yet to emerge in your age and your wisdom. For you see, our lives, even in our later years, are still unfolding. You and I, the 65 and older crowd, are still works in progress. We are still in formation. Our progress and formation, however, are less about striving and more about being. Less about ego and more about soul. About letting go, for sure, but also about letting in. In her book, The Inner Work of Age, Shifting from Role to Soul, Connie Zweig writes, quote, for some of us, the call to retire is a divine messenger, a force that awakens in us a yearning for something more, a holy longing to transcend a role, an identity, or a purpose, and to connect to something larger. It invites us to cross a threshold and change our lives from the inside out, unquote. By retire, Zwig means retiring our ego-driven desire for the next promotion or salary increase, for awards and recognition, or a nicer home and car and the latest technology. Retirement for many of us is about giving up stuff. But more importantly, retirement is also about giving up our ego preoccupations and worldly striving so that space opens to welcome the divine messenger that nourishes our soul and allows the deeper joy and satisfaction to arise from within. Now for myself, while I am retiring certain aspects of my life, I still possess a strong work ethic and a desire to be of service. And I believe I still have something worthwhile to contribute to my family, to congregations and the larger community. And I believe my educational, economic and social privilege obliges me to do so. I believe I am still learning and growing, I believe I can still make a difference. Yet my call to service arises less and less from my desire for achievement and recognition and more and more of the yearnings from within. I am still in my role and identity as minister, but my work now is not driven by the constant demands of ego, but called forth by the gentle urgings of my soul. The call to service has been and in my later years continues to be my path. Others may choose a life of leisure and travel, a complete reinvention of themselves, a devotion to a holy spiritual path, and certainly a combination of any or all these things 
in this third and final act of life. May our soul be our call and may our heart be our guide. And whatever the path our soul calls us to and our heart guides us on, let us not imagine, of course, that our later years will be entirely carefree. The late life realities of financial limitations and medical and mental health challenges, family needs and grief and loss are likely to be present. Yet these things too are part of our formation as elders and as wisdom makers in our lives. What I find helpful and you may find as well is to be both participant and witness to this remarkable life focused process of aging. We are in the process and outside the process. We are actors and audience at once, being ourselves and seeing ourselves. This way of observing and reflecting upon ourselves makes aging a spiritual practice. We can observe and reflect in a number of ways through meditation, prayer, movement, exercise, journaling, dialogue with friends, companions, gardening in nature, art or music, poetry, whatever creative or expressive way you and I might choose. The important thing is to make the time and space to step outside the daily appointments, meetings, obligations and routines to look within ourselves and just be, to be here to be here now. <clears throat> so I ask myself, what have I learned? I reply, I have learned much and I am still learning. I ask myself, how have I grown up? I reply, I have grown and I am still growing up. I ask, how have I deepened? I reply, I have looked into the deep places in my heart and I am deepening still. And I ask, am I older and wiser? And I reply, I am older and getting wise older and I am wiser and please getting wiser. <laughs> Allow me to suggest some contemplative practices for self-reflection on the aging process, on the conscious aging process. I'm drawing guidance again from Connie Zwig's book, The Inner Work of Age, which has greatly informed and affected me. Similar to, a, to sitting meditation, find a quiet, comfortable place to sit indoors or out. Breathe slowly and deliberately. Let distracting thoughts come and go. Sit, be still, breathe, and ponder these questions. As Wig writes, death can be denied or death can be a teacher. If we choose to learn from the awareness of our mortality, we might contemplate these things. If you or I were to die today, what would be our greatest regret? What would be our greatest joy? What is the one change you and I could make to bring us closer to living the life we want to live today?
Now let us turn and think about our role, our identity. Now or in the past, teacher, salesperson, social worker, homemaker, medical professional, musician, religious professional, banker, CEO, tradesperson, minister, whatever your vocation is or has been, I invite you to contemplate this question. If I am or you are no longer the role with which we identify, then who are we or who would we like to be? Who would we like to be? And here's another, who are we question. This one relating to injury and illness. Who were we before this injury or illness? Who are we now during recovery? And who will we be after we recover? Now let us contemplate our image of the divine with this question, who or what do we see or, or feel when we close our eyes and say God or spirit or by whatever name you name the divine? And does this image or feeling fit our current understanding of the divine shaped by our life experience? And one more question to contemplate another question of here and now. Who are you and I free to be now and here? Who are we free to be? We can choose to age consciously, whatever our life circumstances. For myself, I choose to live in satisfaction of my life past and present, in awareness of my certain death, and at, in anticipation of my final 17 years, or the 50-50 odds of 25 years, and in this time to live with purpose and soul each and every day I live. And you, how do you choose to age? What is the wisdom of your age? The poet speaks again now, more than ever, you can be generous toward each day that comes. Yes, let us be generous toward each day and let us be generous toward ourselves. Yes, and let us be generous toward others and all creation. As the poet speaks these final words to us, every day you have less reason not to give yourself away. Amen. As part of our morning worship, we pause to bring our gifts 
to this community, to sustain this community, gifts we give really to each other to maintain this place, to maintain those who gather here for worship and for friendship, a place of sanctuary during hard times. The morning offering will now be given and gratefully received, you may come forward. Here and at Unitarian Universalist congregations, this time of sharing is central to our life together, sharing joys, sharing our concerns. I think it's what bonds us into community as much or as more than anything else, that we are in a safe place, we are among friends, that we can open our hearts, we can take risks, we can be vulnerable, with each other in this time of sharing. And if you will allow me, if I may begin, because it's heavy on my heart, as I'm sure as it is with many of you, to recognize in grief a tragic milestone in our country of a million of our citizens who have died from COVID. It's been hard. It's been a time of enormous loss these two years, more than two years now. The pandemic continues. We must take care. We must take moments to feel the loss and the grief. Other joys or concerns that you wish to share, please, please speak them now. So I'll end the joy. Um, I have a couple of joys I just forgot. Okay, so first of all, I feel like we'll come back to it. Now that I'm 
We can feel your joy, and you are obviously aging consciously. I commend you. Any others? Well, I'm going to add to the, to the bad stuff and thinking of this shooting buff ball. And um, the, the threat of this white nationalism, and you know, been, I think we have heard all over the place, like school board meetings with people. Mm-hmm. You know, say you can't talk about anything to do with race. Um, you know, that is white somehow. And um, it's, it's, I just don't see where this goes. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like one of the few things I can do is like, if I can get somebody, and there's some people on my staff that are going to do, but if I can get somebody to say something that is kind of white supremacist, basically, um, I'm getting out of that. Thank you. Thank you for that joyful testimony. Beautiful. Yes, please. Okay, so I have something completely different. I've got a or a game of seven. I'm not going to walk this afternoon, and I can choose between the 
the garden, we the and we the So it's a joyful choice. <laughs> Thank you. We need, we need to do that. Beautiful. Any final joys or concerns? May another's joy be our joy and another concerns be our concern. Because we are bound together in community where we are safe and cared for and loved. Let's join our voices once more, our closing hymn. It's number 324. In our hymn book, Where My Spirit Onward Leads. As we enter the third act of life, let us look back with gratitude and look forward with anticipation. The role we once played is no more. For now we hear and heed the soul's calling. And when we make our final bow, may we be at peace, having become our best and truest selves. Go and be peace today and be at peace in all the years ahead. <laughs>
Thank you.